My name is Yazara, otherwise known as um, Dana to some, only to my mother. And Yah is the convergence of my paternal and paternal grandmothers together. And um, I was singing background for Erica Badu besides women like China Black and, and Dombi Gilbert and Erica Badu with the name Dana. And I felt like I needed something that commanded my ancestral respect. And one of my great ancestors is Yah. So I was my, my father was born from a line of 29 children, 26 girls, and only surviving boy. You know, and I went to Ghana for the first time last year. It was just really great to make this connection between my internal self and what the name Yazara means to me. I never knew that my father's last name, our surname, Odoro Corton, was the, the blending of his paternal and paternal grandparents. Because my wow. name is, and I didn't meet my father until I was 14. And we didn't have this conversation until last year when I turned 39. So, wow, what's happening right now for me and all these really amazing transitions into feeling like everything I thought I was actually true opposed to allowing the lies that other people told me about myself mm -hmm. to penetrate, specifically when you're born in a place like Washington, D.C., where 10 years ago you go to a party and somebody like, if you're here with your kid, like, say, hey, but well, that, that would, for me, would decimate me, like, would bring me back to, like, seventh grade, mm -hmm. and, um, Thank God I had a chance, but I was really proud to kind of travel the world. Really, besides that, really, I'm really going to these places, these mm -hmm. places where people love black folk and love all black people. Where I was like, wow, well, maybe I'm part of something that really is beautiful. I never thought that I wasn't, but to make a correlation between my internal royalty and my exterior appearance, my internal carriage, mm -hmm. who I am, connected when I got to Ghanaian soil and started to hear about my family. Wow. Seven cousins, my father with the largest um, printing company all in West Africa, and a native wow. newspaper called the Sporting News. Mm. And he saved the entire village from cholera. But he, like all politicians, had a loose zipper and lots of charm. Mm. So I mm. was 16. Papa was a rolling Papa stone. Was a rolling stone. <laughs> There's all issues and proclivities and whatever. But I, you know, sometimes our biggest and our brightest have the largest fallacies and weaknesses because mm. people aren't human. Like I, you know, even when I talk, I hear people talk about very specific folks, they see all the races. Why we should not deify people? Mm -hmm. Take them for what it is. They're gifted to like run through them. Mm -hmm. but don't make them anything important. Like I mean, I told the, the, the story about how I shoplifted at the age of fifteen. You know, <laughs> and a cheap. So pink, what did you say? Pink silk shirt. Um, <laughs> well, I was really into like Madonna at the time, and this was like 1992, so I was really behind. But I fell in love with like wearing like cross and goth, and I was wearing a hot pink silk raw silk shirt and stretch jeans and Timberland boots. Oh, running through the yes. station like a like a ball of fire with my homegirl <laughs> just holding a little jacket, and um, you know, look at the challenges of childhood and adolescence and womanhood and look at how children are treated by our legal system now, like really like adults. I would have, I think the, the social worker was responsible for my child wanted me to go to Cedar Knoll, which was the equivalent of a, like a Rikers for children. I wouldn't have survived. I would have been eaten up by the system. I wouldn't be me. And it was because a judge my judge and we, we Maryland and Montgomery County was like, this is excessive. Mm -hmm. That you want to send this kid away for the rest of her life. Like she's sending me drawings. I got to send the guns for visual arts, dance, theater, and voice. And I decided to make voice. I often wonder if I should take it there. But, um, you know, I experienced the best and the worst of myself in that space. In the environment of Washington, D.C., I was in this ensemble where it was often buying all the lights, and all the dark skin girls in the back. And I never had a recital until my senior year.